SpaceX and NASA are looking into a sluggish parachute issue that happened on the past two capsule missions. Keep watching for details on that story, as well as exciting news about a mission to Venus. Let's dive right into it. First, the parachute delay twice. NASA and SpaceX have announced that they're investigating a reoccurring problem with trailing parachutes on SpaceX's Crew Dragon capsule, which are crucial functions that the SpaceX need to land when it returns from orbit. The two spaceflight partners, however, are downplaying the severity of the situation, arguing that the parachutes are still acting securely despite the behavior. Despite a tragic cargo trip in 2015, SpaceX has been safely transporting Dragon capsules to and fro the International Space Station for years. SpaceX successfully sent a new four-person crew, known as Crew 3, to the station on Crew Dragon in November, just a few days after returning another crew, known as Crew 2. During Crew 2's nighttime landing, spectators noted that one of the four parachutes took longer to fill than the others as the vehicle descended through the air. The sluggish chute ultimately filled before the Crew Dragon splashed down in the Gulf of Mexico and all four astronauts emerged safely. Following the splashdown, NASA and SpaceX suggested that the behavior was typical. During a news conference following the splashdown, Stitch stated that these parachutes had shown this behavior, adding that NASA reviewed the data and found it to be within the usual range of some of their tests. SpaceX also stated that it thoroughly analyzed footage and data from the landing before flying crew 3, but that the behavior was to be expected. Gernson Meyer remarked during a news conference following the landing in November that it operated almost just how it was supposed to perform. The problem resurfaced with the recent return of a cargo version of the Dragon, known as CRS-20 from the International Space Station on January 24th. Because NASA didn't give a live stream of the landing, the trailing parachute was unknown to the general public for approximately a week. During a press conference, Kathy Luters, NASA's Associated Administrator for Space Operations, stated that the space agency no longer does live streams of cargo landings due to expenses, but the agency now plans to have news conferences following the conclusion of cargo missions in the future. At the press conference, NASA and SpaceX reaffirmed their claim that this had happened previously. Stitch stated that they witnessed the trailing parachute phenomenon with these huge ring cell parachutes. He went on to claim that they had observed it in previous testing and cargo flights as well. Personnel fear that when the parachutes release, three of the chutes may aerodynamically shadow the other parachute, forcing it to deploy more slowly. Next, we look into claims that the behavior is normal. The trailing parachutes were seen during development and prior cargo operations, according to officials, and might be natural components of the multiple chute design. Despite the sluggish opening of one of the four huge chutes, they noticed that the capsule plummeted at a safe velocity. Gerson Meyer stated that the descent data was close to normal. The fourth parachute took 75 seconds longer to fill than the other three during the November landing, while the slow parachute on the January landing took 63 seconds longer to inflate. Despite this, NASA stated that the aircraft dropped at a regular rate. NASA and SpaceX both say that the Dragon can land safely, even if the fourth parachute does not deploy. During the press briefing, Steve Stitch, manager of NASA's commercial crew program, which manages Dragon, stated that one parachute might be completely gone, and still be cleared to land for a safe splashdown off the coast of Florida. Similar parachutes may be found on Boeing's Starliner crew capsule and NASA's Orion Moon capsule, both of which have yet to launch people. These two occasionally lag when inflating, according to Stitch, and the findings of the SpaceX inquiry will be revealed. Next, SpaceX and NASA tried to find the problem. Officials from SpaceX and NASA said on Friday that they want to learn more about what's going on, especially before deploying another crew in a month or two. According to Steve Stitch, manager of NASA's commercial crew program, they're looking at images, checking the parachutes for hints of what the issue might be, and taking additional precautions with this highly crucial equipment. SpaceX's William Gastemeyer, a veteran NASA administrator, informed reporters that the company is not taking anything for granted. SpaceX's first private journey to the space station, which will be escorted by three ticket-buying businessmen and a former astronaut, is scheduled to take off from NASA's Kennedy Space Center on March 30th. NASA's next astronaut ferry trip is scheduled for April 15th. But altercations may not be necessary. While the Dragon teams want to do a thorough evaluation of the parachutes, they do not expect any substantial hardware or design changes to the Dragon vessels. Bill Gerstenmeier, SpaceX's Vice President of Build and Flight Reliability, said during a press conference that this is more of a learning exercise for how they can enhance their design and engineering understanding of a parachute functioning. SpaceX and NASA believe that no alterations are required for the Crew-3 Crew Dragon capsule, which is presently docked with the International Space Station. This spring, the capsule, 
whose parachutes couldn't truly be adjusted in the first place, will return four people. Gerstenmeier declined to comment when asked if the crew Dragon could land with two parachutes. Instead, he pointed out that during parachute testing, SpaceX simulated the loss of one parachute and discovered that the three other parachutes filled up the slack. In fact, he believed that the faulty parachute contributed to the other three parachutes inflating. He stated that they didn't want to consider this to be a deteriorating problem, but rather one that has the ability to self-correct. Now, let's talk about inflation analysis and vendor visits. But in addition to studying the data again to better understand this behavior, NASA and SpaceX have stated that they want to visit the vendor that provides SpaceX's parachutes and spread out the chutes to see if anything appears to be wrong. They also intend to conduct a inflation analysis to see whether all of the cargo landing characteristics were within reasonable limits. If all goes well, NASA will work with SpaceX to clear it to launch its next crewed mission. Crew 4 on April 15th. In addition, SpaceX intends to launch a private crew of astronauts to the International Space Station for the firm Axiom by the end of March. NASA relies on SpaceX's Crew Dragon capsule to keep the International Space Station in good working order. At the time, the capsule was one of only two spacecrafts capable of transporting humans to and from the ISS. A comparable variant of the spacecraft is also in charge of transporting goods to the station. Now, in other space news, the mission to Venus. The first commercial space Space mission to another planet might launch as early as next year, taking a robotic space probe to Venus to analyze its clouds for life-supporting ingredients. The small robotic probe, the first in a planned series of three called the Venus Life Finder missions, is among the most ambitious of a growing slate of planned space missions taking place outside of not only traditional government space institutions, but also the handful of major companies, most notably SpaceX and Blue Origin, that have dominated the private space industry thus far. The construction of the probe's two-pound scientific payload has already began thanks to the funding from MIT Illumini, according to Seeger. Meanwhile, the cost of building, launching, and operating the entire 100-pound robotic probe during its mission to Venus will be covered by Rocket Lab, a Long Beach, California-based aerospace company. Rocket Lab, like most of the developing commercial space sector, has concentrated on satellite launches into orbit. The business has previously launched more than 100 satellites into orbit using lightweight rockets launched from New Zealand's Mayan Peninsula, and it aims to launch rockets from its new launch facility in Virginia's Walls Island soon. The company's spokeswoman declined to comment on the expenses and funding of the VLFF mission. Next, NASA's InSight Mars Lander. NASA's InSight Mars Lander has recovered from a safe mode induced by a dust storm in January, but the project's head believes that the mission is still expected to finish within a year due to the dwindling power levels. In a presentation to the Mars Exploration Program Analysis Group, MEPEG, on February 3rd, Bruce Bernard, principal investigator for the InSight project, stated that he anticipated the lander to resume regular activities on February 5th after entering a safe mode on January 7th. The safe mode was activated by a regional dust storm that prevented sunlight from reaching the solar-powered lander. Based on data from another spacecraft, he believed the storm grew swiftly, not allowing them to get much of a heads-up on this. The optical depth, or tau, of dust storms is measured, with a larger value indicated that less sunlight reaches the ground. For this storm, Bernard stated that the storm never reached a height of 2, which according to him is still very dusty, but not so dusty that it harms the spacecraft. InSight might have weathered dust storms with a tau of roughly 4 before the lack of sunlight available for electricity caused severe issues. In comparison, the Opportunity rover, whose mission ended in 2018 due to a dust storm, measured a tau of 10.8 before going offline. That's a wrap for this video. Do you agree with NASA and SpaceX's handling of the situation? Let us know in the comments down below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like this. See you in the next one.